Hello everyone, my name is Jack Eastman and welcome to another Generation Connection history video. For this week, we're gonna be exploring the history of the Titanic and its sinking. Hope you've enjoyed all the videos so far and let's, let's jump right into it. So the Titanic sunk famously on April 15th, 1912 off the coast of Newfoundland in the North Atlantic. And obviously as, as a, a lot of people know, it was hit by an iceberg um, and the really sad tragedy of it is that of the 2,240 passengers and crew on board, more than 15, or 1,500 rather, lost their lives in the disaster. And it has inspired really countless books, articles, films, um, with the most notable one being the 1970, 1997 movie Titanic, which starred Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. So building the Titanic was kind of a big feat for the 19th century because it started among rival shipping lines in the first half of the 20th century rather. And in particular, the White Star Line found itself in a battle for steamship primacy with Cunard, which was a British firm. So these two firms really struggled together to build kind of their best ship. And it turns out that Cunard in 1911 built the Titanic. So it was really a magnificent feat because more than 10,000 people attended the launching and everything went off fine on its first voyage flight. But as kind of ex is explored later on, there were some fatal flaws to the Titanic, which really people didn't see coming until really after the fact when you could look at the construction designs and what caused it to sink. So reading from history.com here, according to some hypothesis, Titanic was doomed from the start by a design that many lauded as state of the art. The Olympic class ships featured a double bottom and 15 watertight bulkhead compartments equipped with electric watertight doors that could be operated individually or simultaneously by a switch on the bridge. It was the watertight bulkheads that inspired the Shipbuilder magazine in a special issue devoted to Olympic liners to deem them practically unsinkable. As many of you know, like the Titanic was seen as an unsinkable ship and then this catastrophe happened and it kind of changed everyone's view of what an unsinkable ship could be. So the problem was with the watertight compartment design, it was a flaw critical in the sinking. While the individual bulkheads were watertight, the walls separating them extended only a few feet above the waterline. So water could pour in from one compartment into another, especially as the ship began to list or pitch forward. So yeah, like these, these logs, if they're full of water, it kind of contributed to the fact that a lot of lives were lost because when they filled with water, it put pressure on the ship and in turn made it sink after that collision with the iceberg. So moving on, talk about a little bit about kind of the, the statistics of the people who were on the, the Titanic and who survived and who fatally perished in, the, in those instances. So in terms of fatalities, so it's really unknown the exact number of people that, were, that died that day. Uh, most estimates come in at around 1,500 people of the 2,200 passengers, as I touched a little bit on earlier. But to give some more context to that, so some investigations were done, and it seems like the, there were disproportionate amounts of people that died from each section of the ship that um, they came from. So the crew suffered the most casualties with about 700 fatalities. And then after that, third class suffered greatly and only 174 of their approximately 710 passengers survived. And that information is from Britannica on that. And now coming, kind of going back to history.com, talk a little bit more about the presence of the members on the ship. Before that though, one more interesting statistic about passengers likely to die. So passengers traveling on the first class of the Titanic were actually 44% more likely to survive than the other passengers. So it kind of goes to show that at least in this case, the rich were able to survive at a higher rate than all the, the crew or third, pass, third class passengers. And so in terms of the notable passengers that are on the Titanic, or I guess I can start with a notable one who was absent, 
which I'm sure you've heard the name of JP Morgan. So he was supposed to be on, on the line, but uh, he canceled last visit when business matters delayed him. So he was he was planning to go on that, and that would have been kind of a, a major suffering from the financial world if JP Morgan, probably one of the most common commonplace names in the financial industry, were to perish that day as well. Moving on to kind of uh, the other aspect and board of, of passengers, the wealthiest one was John Jacob Astor IV, who was an heir to the Astor family fortune. And he had made waves earlier by marrying an 18-year-old girl, 29 years his junior. So some other notable passengers was the owner of Macy's. And then also um, just some different employees to the collection and kind of first class really luminaries and uh, lots of journalists, academics, tourists uh, who would enjoy the first class and time accommodations of the ship. But even though there were plenty of notable people on board, a lot of the majority of the passengers actually were the third class. So as I touched on earlier, it's about 710 people in that class, which um, is kind of the bottom two levels combined where the iceberg actually first struck. Um, some actually paid less than $20 to make the crossing. So it was a really um, substantial amount of people in the third class and also unfortunately a substantial amount of them perished. So now before we move into the video, I'm gonna just kind of give a little explanation of that kind of that night and the iceberg that hit it. So this is also from Britannica. So some interesting flaws and things to note is that there are lots of iceberg warnings that were issued throughout that night and most of them were passed along. However, the most important one failed to get it to the bridge. So for some reason, a message was never relayed to the Titanic's bridge when they entered an ice field in that Northern Atlantic Ocean. And after that, um, the lookouts actually saw the iceberg. Um, and I'll read directly from the article as it, as it gets into the interesting details. So at about 11.40 PM, an iceberg was sighted and the bridge was notified. And the first officer ordered a, what is called a hard A storeboard, a maneuver that under the order system then would place the turn, the ship to port. So it would turn left since the iceberg would have been on its right. So the engines would reverse. And the idea was to try to get the Titanic to begin to, to turn before it would come in contact with the iceberg. But as we know now, it wasn't able to turn fast enough and it was actually ended up kind of creating a giant hole in the iceberg and it scraped all, all the way along the bow. And after assessing damages, some of the officers determined that their compartments were filled with water, causing the bow to drop deeper into the ocean. And in turn, as we talked about earlier with those design flaws, the water started to rush into the ship at rapid paces. And this is when um, things kind of went south for the Titanic and the captain and other officers began sending distress signals. And most of the ships were too far away that received the signals to do anything about it. So it was determined that lifeboats should begin to be launched and the orders were women and children first. And although the Titanic's number of lifeboats exceeded that required by the British Board of Trade, its 20 boats could carry only 1,178 people, which is very far short of the total number of passengers. And this problem got worse when lifeboats were starting to be launched well below capacity because crewmen worried that the Davids would not be able to support the weight of a fully loaded boat. So an interesting thing is, and, and kind of sad when you think about it with the amount of people on board is that lifeboat number seven, which was the first to leave the Titanic, held only about 27 people, even though it had space for 65. And in the end, only 705 people would be rescued in lifeboats. And now I can share my screen real quick and we can go over a quick video that gives a good overview on a quick kind of CGI graphic of how the Titanic sinks. So it'll be interesting to watch. So as you see, it hits the iceberg here 
and this is on double speed just so we move through it a little faster, but we'll be able to see the progress of the ship as it begins to take on water and lifeboats are deployed. And you can see, as we talked about earlier, the bow is dipping into the water, causing it to take in more and more water and putting more stress on that boat. And you'll see that culminates in a bit with the boat actually snapping in two pieces and then finally falling both sides into the ocean. So here we go, it's tipping up and the power turns off and then it dips and falls all the way to the bottom of the ocean, where it's later to be found actually. And uh, dive, diving experts were able to locate the boat and do several excursions and bring up some of the lost materials. But as you see, both of the halves of the boat sink to the bottom of the ocean. So with that, that'll conclude our history of the Titanic and its sinking video. I hope you enjoyed and remember to like and subscribe to catch every video from Generation Connection. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day.